Good evening and welcome to our Good Friday service. We trust you're all well and we hope that you're all remembering to stay at home, protect the NHS and to save lives. We're living in uncertain days, aren't we? Days that this world have never seen before. This virus is indiscriminate. It's affecting the old and the young, the rich and the poor, famous or otherwise. Even our Prime Minister is seriously ill at this time. And we wish him well and pray for a speedy recovery. So many planned events this year have either been postponed or cancelled. Sporting events, entertainment, weddings, birthday celebrations, all put on hold. All our plans for 2020, it seems, have come to nothing. But you know, many years ago, the disciples had plans for Jesus. Surely they thought he would save them. Maybe he could overthrow the Roman Empire, even perhaps become king. And yet their plans, as they thought, came to nothing. But you know what? We might be troubled and bewildered, just like the disciples were. And yet God could be trusted that first Good Friday. And he can be trusted this Good Friday because he's still in charge. He's still in control. And even though we're far away from our family and friends in this lockdown time, just know that there's still hope that this time will pass. Good Friday looks bleak, doesn't it? But we thank God that Sunday is coming. And this evening, we will be taking communion. So if you haven't already done so, when you'd like to join in with us, then can I encourage you now to go and get some bread and some wine or some juice and join with us in communion after these songs. Shall we pray? Lord God, we just thank you for today. We thank you for sending Jesus to die that cruel death on the cross for us. We thank you that by trusting in the death of our Lord Jesus, that our sins can be forgiven. We just ask that you be with us this evening and help us to focus on the message that Pastor Nick has for us. Lord God, we just pray that you'll be with us now. And we thank you, thank you for the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Light of the world, you step down into darkness Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a light, spin with you Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to
wash away my sin Nothing but the blood of Jesus What can make me whole again Nothing but the blood of Jesus Friday, we remember with Christians all around the world the death of Jesus. And though it seems like a dark day in a dark time, we also remember the hope that is to come on Easter Sunday. So if you're feeling in a dark place today, I pray that you'll take this time to celebrate communion with us and know that the darkness does not last forever, that light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. Amen. Amen. Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it 
and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's all take some bread and just remember together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For when you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's drink of the cup together and remember what Jesus did for us on that Good Friday. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this time together where we remember the sacrifice that your son made. Thank you that even in the darkest night, there's always the hope of the morning and that the light will shine through. And I pray that we'll all know a closer relationship with Jesus Christ at this time. Amen.
and welcome. I'm just going to pray before we come to the word. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you for this evening. We thank you for this Good Friday. And Lord, we just thank you for the good news that is, uh, is tied up in this message. Lord God, we just pray that you just be with us at this time and speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want you to imagine the scene. 2,000 years ago, outside Jerusalem, a man is hanging on a cross. He's nailed to a cross. He has a crown of thorns on his head, not the sort of thorns that you get on your rose bushes, but big thorns. And it's been pressed into his head and the blood is flowing down his face. And his back is, is in tatters because he'd already been flogged. He was never meant to get to the cross. The authorities were hoping they could let him go. But the people were baying for his blood. And here he is in the center, there's three crosses and in the center is this man. Above his head is this inscription, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. A title that he should never have, never wanted, and yet there it is. And to his left and to his right are two criminals. And yet this man who has done nothing but good, he spent three years of his life going around healing people, raising the dead, teaching about a better way of living. And yet here he is, nailed to a cross, and it is a mystery to us, it was a mystery to his followers, and yet, and this is what we find, is that this was the plan all along. Here is Jesus, King of the Jews. And the message tonight is, behold your King. Behold your King. So I'm just going to read from the Gospel of John. If you turn with me, it's John chapter 19. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side. And Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but write, he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answers, and said, what I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to each soldier a part, and also his tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be. Then the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. Amen. So here we have Jesus with this inscription above his head, being mocked by the Roman authorities. The soldiers, they were mocking him. It wasn't a, a true title. They weren't honoring him. They were mocking him, and yet, here we have this scene with this man on a cross. This amazing man. And here he is, here is the king. The king of kings, and the lord of lords. And just to remember the history of Israel, they had a strange relationship with their kings throughout history. When Moses brought them out of Egypt, Moses was their leader. And he wasn't a king, he, he was a person that was in between them and God. And he would go into uh, the tabernacle and he would talk to God. And then he would come out and say, this is what God says. But as years went on, the people wanted a king. 
And they came to a man called Samuel who was, who was in charge at that time. And they said, we want a king. All the other nations around us have a king. And Samuel wasn't very happy about this. But eventually they agreed and they had a king. And Samuel went and he appointed a king. And it went okay for a while, but then this new king, Saul, he decided he would do things his way, not God's way, his way. And things started to go a little bit pear-shaped after that. And then the next king who replaced him was King David. And some of you may well know who that is. It's the, the boy who killed Goliath with, a, with his sling. And he went on to be probably the best king that Israel ever had, King David. He was so good that he's described in the Bible as a man after God's own heart. He was a good king, not perfect. He made many mistakes, some big mistakes, what the Bible calls sin. But to God, he was a man after his own heart, a man who loved God, and he was the king. But there were many kings after David. None of them really lived up to his standard. And in fact, some of them were downright evil. And over time, it came to pass that they, they went into slavery. Israel was split in two, and they went through many, many years of difficulty. And then eventually God brought them back to their own land, to Israel, back to Jerusalem. And we find at the beginning of Jesus' life that there is a king, King Herod. And remember, he tries to kill all the children, or he has all the children killed in Bethlehem because he hears that a king is born in Bethlehem. This is when Jesus is born. Such a wicked man. This is the type of kings that Israel has had. And yet this is what they wanted. And at the time of Jesus, when he was crucified, there was in fact four kings. The kingdom had been split up and there were four kings at that time. So here we have, and this is the irony of it, is Jesus is hanging on the cross and he is called the king of the Jews. A title above all of the kings that are in existence in Israel at that time. And yet they're doing it to mock him. So the question is, if Jesus really is a king, what sort of king is he? That's what I want to consider tonight. What sort of king is Jesus? The first thing we learn is that Jesus is a king from a different kingdom. He actually said to Pilate, didn't he? He said, my kingdom is not of this world. Totally confused by it. He couldn't get his head around it at all. But here he is. Jesus. A king from a different kingdom. And this kingdom, which he described and through his ministry, he called the kingdom of God. Through this kingdom, he demonstrated God's love. And he tried to teach the people that if only they would turn back to God and live for God and live by his rules, then the kingdom of heaven could be seen even on earth. Even though Jesus' actual kingdom is not in this world, we can still live by the rules and bring that kingdom into existence right here, right now. That's the power of Jesus. That's the sort of king that he is. He's a king that lives by different rules. You know, the kings of this world, kings and queens, they expect to be served, they expect things to be given them, they expect to live in palaces, they expect their offspring to become kings and queens. But you see, Jesus is bringing a different set of rules. He lived his life in a different way. You see, he was the servant king. There was a situation where the disciples, they, they came in from traveling and, and when they were walking around, it's quite dusty. And, and Jesus one day said, I'm going to wash your feet. And Peter, the, the disciple, he was really uncomfortable with this He's, because this is, this is their leader. He's like, no, 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 you can't wash my feet. That's, that's not right. That's not right. And Jesus says, no, I have to do this. So Peter being Peter is... 
he's in for a penny in for a pound he's like well if you wash my feet you might as well wash the whole of me and Jesus just said no I just need to wash your feet and Jesus knelt at their feet and he washed their feet how many leaders do you know would do that how many kings do you know would do that but this is Jesus the servant king so not only did he come to serve but he came as a sacrifice how many people do you know would be willing to sacrifice themselves for somebody else but here we have Jesus on a cross sacrificing himself for the whole world that's the sort of king that we serve a king that takes the pain and the suffering upon himself so that you don't need to experience it and what suffering are you talking what are you talking about what suffering are we talking about here we're talking about the suffering for sin Jesus came as a sin offering he died as a sacrifice for you and for me and on that cross God poured out his anger and his judgment on Jesus so instead of you being judged Jesus was judged in our place he became our sacrifice so this demands a response surely it demands a response of us when we hear this that this man has given himself for us because we all know that we've made mistakes we all know that we have sinned but but here we are we have a man that's given his life for us and we need to respond because surely that must stir up some feelings in us it must, must cause us to think well well why did he do that and do I need to do anything yes you do we need to call out to him say Jesus save me I've messed up I've sinned in my life and Lord I want you to be my king because the kings of this world they wouldn't do the things that you would do they wouldn't serve me they wouldn't sacrifice themselves for me but you have already done this but you see Jesus is coming again there's a great verse towards the end of the Bible it's in Revelations 19 and it talks about a, a rider on a white horse and it's talking about Jesus about him returning once again and we see there that we have this picture of this man we have this picture of this man and he is the warrior king you see Jesus is coming back and even though he was a sacrifice the first time he came and he came and he and he took all the punishment he took all of the the beatings and the and the death but when he returns he comes as warrior king it says that he will lead the host of heaven a mighty army and for us that gives us hope because all of the bad things that go on in the world there will be retribution there will be judgment and all the evil that is ever done it will be called to account and Jesus will be the one that will take vengeance on the enemies of God and once again I ask you the question surely we have to respond to this are you going to respond to this tonight this Jesus this King are you prepared to make him your King to follow him to allow him to lead you through your life to show you that there is a better way of living and that his kingdom which will last forever is in a different world it's in a different realm and if we put our trust in him right now we can bring the kingdom of heaven into this world and we can start to live for him and that is an amazing thing so if that's you if you want to put your trust in Jesus tonight I'm gonna to pray for you and get in touch drop us a message and let us know how you've responded let me pray Heavenly Father Lord God we just thank you for Jesus we thank you for this opportunity to 
respond. We thank you that he is King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And Father, this evening I just pray that those people that have heard this and are considering, Lord, their place before you, that, Lord, they will cry out to you and ask you to save them. So, Lord, I just pray that you bless us now. We thank you for this Good Friday and we thank you that there is Easter Sunday and we look forward to the resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen.